Okay, so uh, hello class. Today we're going to be talking about how to create an APA 7th edition style correlation table. It's fairly simple to a 6th edition table, but different enough that I'm going to make a tutorial about it. So let's start off. First, you have your Word document over here, and we're going to talk about how to do this in Word specifically because that's what a lot of people use. Uh, I cannot help you quite as much for how you would do it with a different program, but you know, uh, some of the principles are similar or the same. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you are following APA guidelines in terms of font. And that is you want to have Times New Roman as your font at a 12, 12 point font. Okay. All right. And this is where we get started. Now, the first thing that you need to know about tables in APA style is that they're numbered in your paper. So they're numbered in the order that they appear. So we're going to pretend that this is the first table in your paper, so it will be table one. And you write that out like this, table one, there's no period, there's nothing like that. Uh, sorry, I keep frowning, <laughs> it's, I keep out some weird stuff. All right, so there's table one, and now this should be in bold. So there's your table number. This way, if you refer to the table in text, people will be able to tell which table you're talking about. I can say, see table one for correlations, and they find the table that's labeled table one. Next, you want some sort of title that tells you what is in that table. It should tell your reader what's in that table. This is not bolded, and it is italicized. Oops, and this should be in title casing. So I'm going to say correlations between statistics, or correlations between, let's say, hmm, so I'm using data from the My Anime List 2016 data set. So it's correlations between um, anime viewership ratings and episode numbers. So that tells people exactly what's in the table. It is italicized as is APA style, and there's no period at the end of it. So there's no period at the end of this table because it is technically a title. All right, now we can go on to making the actual table. So here's the part that is pretty specific to Word. I'm not necessarily sure how you would do this in other word processors, but I have seen that you can do similar things in things like Google Docs. So I'm going to insert a table. I'm going to go to insert table. Now for correlation tables, you will have one column that's dedicated to row headings and one row that's dedicated to column headings. So you're going to look at the number of variables you have. We have three variables, the number of episodes, the average rating of the anime, and the number of members that have watched it. So that's going to be four columns and four rows. So three for each variable, and then one for the headings. Bam. All right. So I can put variables here. This shouldn't be bolded, by the way. And then. For the rows, I'm going to do one. So I'm going to label the rows by number. This is row one. And again, I don't want that bolded. And this will be our first variable. Oops, sorry. <laughs> our first variable is the number of episodes. Number of episodes. Our second variable is the average rating of the anime. So that's number two, average rating. I'll deal with the bolding later. <laughs> and our third variable is the viewership. So the number of people on my anime list that have reported watching that anime. Now a lot of times you will have way more than three variables in these correlation tables, especially if you're doing a more complicated study. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to go and instead of once again repeating the names of the variables up here, you'll just report their row number. So one, two, three. That one corresponds to number of episodes. You can kind of see that here. The two corresponds to average rating, and the three corresponds to viewership. So I've got, got to get rid of my frown again. Let's get rid of the bold. Now one thing to note is that these columns here, they're going to be centered. It'll make it easier for people to read your table if it's like that. They, the text in there should be centered. There we go. Now APA style is really specific about how it wants your tables to look. It says there should be 
a solid line above the title of the columns, a solid line below the title of the columns, and a solid line at the bottom of the table. So there's a pretty easy way to do this in Word. This is the shortcut that I always use. I'm going to highlight the whole table, go to Table Design up here, and go to Table Styles. I'm going to look through all the styles they have, and the one that I like to use is this one down here, tab List Table 6 Colorful. I'm going to click on that, and now it's almost perfect to APA style. We've got that line above, the line below, and the line at the very bottom, but we don't want those gray bits there. So I'm just going to go to shading. I'm going to make sure it's on white. I'll select that. And now those gray lines have gone away. I'm going to get rid of the bold. And ta-da! Nicely formatted APA styled table. Now let's enter the information that we've got. So over here I have the R input from the analysis that I did on the MyAnimeList data. And here we have the correlations. I also did the correlations in another um, R package here. Um, here's the sample size for each correlation, so how many observations had both data for both variables, and here are the p-values for those. And we are going to use the correlations and the p-values. Um, sample size we're not necessarily going to use right now. We could, and I'll show you a more complicated type of correlation table later that would, that would incorporate similar information. All right, so let's put this in. So the first correlation is between variable one and one, number of episodes and number of episodes. Now, if you remember back to stats, if you've taken a stats class, a correlation of something with itself is always going to be one. And we can confirm that looking over here, the correlation between number of episodes and number of episodes, you're correlating a thing with itself, it's just one. We know that. Your reader, if they know about stats, will know that, so we don't actually say that. We just put a little dash there to indicate this is a correlation of a variable with itself, it's going to be one, they don't really need that information. Now we are correlating variable one with variable two, so the number of episodes and average rating. So let's go to our R output here. We go to the column for number of episodes, the row for average rating, and we see the correlation is negative 0.03. So I'm going to enter that here. Now one thing that you'll notice here is that there is no zero before the decimal point. This is a little trick of APA style. So in APA style, one of the sort of rules of APA style is that if you have a decimal, you in some cases will put a zero before that decimal, in some cases you won't. Correlations, you do not put the zero in front of the decimal. What's the reasoning behind that? <laughs> well, APA style says you put the zero before the decimal if the number could theoretically be further from zero than one. So if it can be greater than positive one or less than negative one, you put a zero in front of that decimal. Correlations, however, can never be greater than positive one or less than negative one. It's mathematically impossible and just conceptually, that's not a thing to do. It's always between 1 and negative 1. APA style says for numbers that can only be between negative 1 and 1, we don't put a 0 in front of the decimal place, and that's why I'm not putting a 0 in front of the decimal place. This also applies to things like p-values and r-squared. doesn't apply to things like, say, Cohen's d or means and standard deviations. All right! So that's one in. Now let's look at the correlation between number of episodes and viewership. If I go over here, I can see that's negative 0.05, so I'm going to put that in. Again, no zero before the decimal point. Now let's go to column two. This is a correlation between average rating, so variable two, and number of episodes. But we've already done that, right? That is right here. We already have that correlation there. So there's no need to enter it twice, because if people want to know that correlation, they can just go here. So we're just going to leave this blank. Now we have correlation between average rating and average rating. Once again, we don't need that. So we can just put a little dash there because people will know it's one. So we don't need that. And finally, we have viewership and average rating. So we can do that. So average rating and viewership. Here we have number watched and average rating. So, oh, I, I got this wrong. This is viewership and number of episodes, sorry. Yeah, no, I got that right. Okay, 
so this is so we have number of episodes and average rating number of episodes and viewership the last one that we need is viewership and average rating so if we look here average rating and viewership it has a correlation of 0.48 and over here we have the correlation between viewership and viewership again we don't need that now because this last column doesn't provide us any additional information what a lot of people will do and you can do too is you can just straight up get rid of that column it doesn't tell us anything useful so there is a very simple apa 7th edition correlation table now one nice thing that a lot of people have been doing lately and i've gotten in the habit of doing lately is they create a slightly more complicated correlation table that includes some additional information and i'm going to show you how to do that now so this is a correlation oh i forgot one thing my bad we need to include p-values so we can tell people if these things are significant and that's where this comes in so some of these correlations are pretty small negative 0.03 that's probably not significant so let's look at the p-value to see if there actually is a meaningful statistical relationship between number of episodes and average rating so number of episodes and average rating that p-value is 0.11 that is greater than 0.05 so it's not significant so we just don't do anything to this number here. We do not do anything to indicate anything. Now here, the correlation between number of episodes and viewership is negative 0.05. Now let's look at the p-value here in R. That is whoop, 0.001. So that is less than 0.05, but it's greater than 0.001. So we would consider this a p-value of less than 0.01, and we typically indicate that with two asterisks. So I'm going to put two asterisks after that correlation. Finally, we have this correlation between viewership and average rating. That's 0.48. That is a decent correlation. And if we look at the p-value here in R, it's just listed by point as like, oh, it's 0.001, I think. This is aligned a little weird. Or no, 0 0.000. Yeah, it's strangely aligned, but 0 0.00. That just means it's really small so way less than 0.001 we can indicate that with three asterisks to indicate that's significant now if people aren't familiar with the sort of asterisks and their correlation or the relationship with significance in stats we can give a little note so to do this we go right under the table and we type note in italics this shouldn't be bolded and then we just write our note so in this case um one indicates significance at less than 0.05, oh, at p less than 0.05. Two asterisks indicates significance at p less than 0.01. And, and notice I'm not putting that zero in front of the asterisk, in front of the p-value, because once again, p-values can't be greater than one. And finally, three asterisks indicates significance at p less than 0.01. Oop. There you go. Okay, so now we have a note that tells us what those asterisks mean. And you can also use notes to talk about other things that are in there uh, in your table. At this point, I can't really think of what else I would put in that note. I'm sure there's something. Uh, you could say... Um, these correlations do not change if you exclude um, data from whatever. Uh, there's a bunch of things that you can put in that note, just anything that you think your reader might want to know about your table. Now let's do a slightly more complicated correlation table. That's the type that I am very fond of lately. That gives you a bit more information. Now the base is still going to be the same, so frankly I'm just going to copy and paste this table. Do not be shy about copying and pasting your table, formatting, and just swapping out some numbers. But make sure, this is table 2 now, um, correlations, and so this one's going to include some additional information like sample size for each variable, means, and standard deviation. So I'm going to add that to the title with n, in the, oh! N indicating sample size, means and, oh, means and standard deviations. There we go. Oh. 
<laughs> Sorry, reflexive saving. Okay, and this time we are going to add three columns. So I'm just going to go to this column here. I'm going to go to layouts and insert three columns to the left, which means I'm probably going to want to make my other columns a bit narrower. We don't actually need the full column. So, but first I'm going to make the first column N. N just indicates the sample size for that. So how many observations do we have of that particular variable? The next one will be M, which indicates the mean of that variable. And the next one will be SD. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to put mean and standard deviation in the same column, just cause that's a common thing that people tend to do. They tend to indicate it like this. I'm gonna unitalicize these parentheses. There we go. Okay, so now we have our second correlation table. I'm going to keep the note the same just because it's similar. And now we have this data over here. So for the number of anime where we had the number of episodes, we had 3,578 observations. So I'm going to go over here, 3,578. For the numbers that we had ratings for, we had 3,671. And then the number that we had viewership for was 3,787. There we go. So that's one column down. And now we just enter the means and standard deviations. So the mean for episodes was 35.91. Now I'm rounding these to two decimal places and that is frowning whenever I type a one. I'm <laughs> Rounding these to two decimal places because that is APA style. You should round numbers and decimals to two decimal places unless it's p-values, in which case you should round them to three decimal places. Another sort of nitpicky thing, like the zero before the decimal point. All right, so there's 35.91, and now we need to look up the standard deviation, which is down here. So the, if for um, R, sometimes it puts things in scientific notation, so this plus... O1 just means move the decimal one to the side, which means the standard deviation here, and there is a leading zero before the decimal here, because this could be greater than one, theoretically. So 0 0.81, it's again rounding to two decimal places. Next, our average rating, the average there is 6.90. And yes, you do need to put that, <laughs> you do need to, put that O at the end of it. You do need to indicate that to indicate you are going to two decimals, even if it's just a zero there. And then the standard deviation here, once again, we've got that uh, rather annoying, oh, sorry, that was a plus. So this is actually, remove the decimal one to the right. So that was 8.0.64. That's a big standard deviation. I remember that from the <laughs> video that I did, okay? Sorry, my computer is a little upset. Now here's the standard deviation for rating. It looks like we move the decimal to the left here. So 0 0.86. And finally, the mean for members is 42,683.66 with a standard deviation of plus so four. <laughs> Goodness, I'm gonna have to adjust these. Come on, why don't you love me? Yes, there you go. Thank you. Okay, so that is eight, shift that four over, one, two. So that's, shift that four over, so one, two, three, four. 89,000, 121.01. Bam, <laughs> there you go. There is your slightly more complicated APA style correlation table that also includes information on sample size, mean and standard deviation of each variable. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments section and I am happy to help you. But here you go, we have are two APA style correlation tables, one that's a bit more bare bones and another that has a bit more information. I hope you enjoyed and take care. If there's something that you'd like me to cover next, please feel free to leave that in the comments as well and I shall do so. Bye!